So it is 6.01. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone, to Emperor Norton Ridge in 2022, the 150th anniversary of Norton's Bay Bridge Proclamations, New Life for an Old Dream, with speaker John Lumia. My name is Taryn Edwards, and I am one of the librarians at the Mechanics Institute of San Francisco. For those of you who are unfamiliar with mechanics, we are an independent membership organization that houses a wonderful library right in downtown San Francisco. It is the oldest library designed to serve the general public in California. And it is also a cultural event center and a world renowned chess club that is the oldest in the United States. We are happily reopening thanks to the curbing of the coronavirus. We are now open six days a week and I hope to see you there sometime during our regularly scheduled hours. Um, I encourage you to consider becoming a member with us. It is only $120 a year and with that you help support our contribution to the literary and cultural world of the San Francisco Bay Area. And let me tell you, it is starting to whirl again. Um, now, our speaker tonight is John Lumia, who has partnered with the Mechanics Institute several times over the years. And he is the founder of the Emperor Norton Trust, which is a clearinghouse of research on the life and times of our very own emperor, otherwise known as Joshua Norton. John is a writer and activist whose interests have focused on issues in history, urban design, public space, architectural preservation, culture, and politics. And his work has appeared in all kinds of publications, including the San Francisco Chronicle, KQED, Mother Jones, the Wall Street Journal, and more. So to learn more about the Trust's efforts in support of naming the Bay Bridge after Emperor Norton, please see emperornortonbridge.org. And I'm gonna put that in the chat space in just a moment. Thank you, John, so much for coming tonight. Thank you, is that me? I, are you asking me to start? I'm asking you to start. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, thank you, thank you so much uh, to, uh, to Taryn and to the Mechanics Institute for the invitation. It's always uh, great to be uh, in this community. And uh, as Taryn was saying, uh, this is actually the 150th anniversary of uh, Emperor Norton's uh, proclamation setting out the vision for uh, the Bay Bridge. Uh, he actually issued three of these proclamations uh, in 1872. And as it so happens that tomorrow actually is the 150th anniversary of the second of the three. So there was one in January of 1872, one in September, and the second one was on March 23rd, uh, 1872. So I thought it'd be a good idea to start out just for those who may not have actually sort of laid their eyes on these things to sort of show them. Uh, so we can sort of see uh, what these proclamations actually look like. Uh, they were all published in the Pacific Appeal, which was a, uh, a black owned and operated um, abolitionist weekly uh, that published about 250 of the Emperor's proclamations between 1870 and 75. So it really is the, the one publication that, that by far published more than anybody else. Uh, this first one, which came out in January of 1876, all right, sorry, 1872. Um, you know, the, 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 uh, the, Inter the Intercontinental Railroad was coming into Oakland uh, starting in 1869. And so San Francisco was concerned about that because, you know, with, with the Bay unbridged, uh, you know, they knew that, that a key to their own economic success was, you know, getting a direct connection somehow uh, to Oakland. And so the Central Pacific, the Central Pacific Railroad was proposing uh, a bridge at Ravenswood, which is basically where the Dumbarton Bridge is now. And the elders of San Francisco on both the government and business side uh, said, that's really just not gonna be good enough. 
And that was that was sort of the backdrop for the emperor's first proclamation coming out in January 6, 1872, uh, saying, whereas we observe that certain newspapers are agitating the project of bridging the bay, and whereas we are desirous of connecting the cities of San Francisco and Oakland by such means, now therefore we Norton the first a gratia emperor do hereby prohibit the Ravenswood scheme being carried into effect in order that the bridge be built from Oakland Point to Telegraph Hill via Goat Island. Goat Island being uh, what we now know as Yerba Buena Island. Uh, that same day, interestingly, he issued a, another proclamation uh, about some, some uh, rioting that was happening in Los Angeles against the Chinese on, on that, uh, uh, at that time. So, so that was what was happening then. And then he comes back uh, on March 23rd, and he says, uh, the following is decreed in order to be carried into execution as soon as, as, as is convenient. Uh, and he lists three points, the first point being that a suspension bridge be built from Oakland Point to Goat Island and thence to Telegraph Hill, provided such bridge can be built without injury to the navigable waters of the Bay of San Francisco. And then he comes back in September of that year saying, uh, whereas we issued our decree ordering the citizens of San Francisco and Oakland to appropriate funds for the survey of a suspension bridge from Oakland Point via Goat Island, also for a tunnel, and to ascertain which is the best project, and whereas the said citizens have hitherto neglected to notice our said decree, and whereas we're determined our authority shall be fully respected, now therefore we do hereby command the arrest by the army of both the boards of the city fathers if they persist in neglecting our decrees, and then signed his name. So, so that, that, is the, that is the backdrop for, uh, for why we are here now and why uh, many, many people for the last 86 years have been saying and, 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 and working for the idea that in some way or another, uh, the emperor's name should be uh, on this bridge, the San Francisco Open Bay Bridge, which, which, um, which opened in November of 1936. Um, I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to sort of uh, start out here with a, with a little uh, film clip. So we're going to do that, uh, and I would suggest uh, that maybe you want to make sure that you have your volume, volume turned up uh, pretty good so you can hear everything uh, well. It might take a quick second uh, to load, but hopefully not too much. All right, so it looks like we're not going to get that. So I'm going to go to the next uh, the next um, screen. The the video clip that I was going to try to show you there was a there was a there was a there was a television drama in 1956 um, called Telephone Time, sponsored by Bell Telephone, and and these were all sort of stories uh, of the the strange and the unusual, and they were hosted by a gentleman named John Nesbitt. And John Nesbitt was a uh, was a radio and television presenter in San Francisco who actually started uh, in uh, at NBC Radio in 1933. Uh, this show was in 1956, uh, but it seems like uh, Emperor Norton had been sort of a theme for him for some time. Uh, the show in '56 uh, was actually called Emperor Norton's Bridge, a 30 minute drama. It's wonderful. You can get it. Uh, you can actually find it on our website. Um, uh, the, the, the program actually doesn't talk about the bridge at all. Uh, it's just that that was kind of uh, Nesbitt's uh, issue. He'd had, he'd had a previous uh, episode, a radio episode on the emperor in 1945. Uh, but it was interesting to see um, this clip from an interview that appeared in the SF Examiner uh, in 1956, just in advance of that broadcast of the Telephone Time uh, episode. Uh, saying, you know, during his years here, John practically made a down payment on his Big Sur ranch, just telling radio stories about Emperor Norton. And by insisting, the Bay Bridge be called the Emperor's Bridge in his memory. And then quoting, uh, quoting Nesbitt, Norton was the first to suggest the bridge, and the old boy doped it out pretty damn well. I've always campaigned to have it renamed the Emperor's Bridge. I'll never give up. And then it goes on. Uh, so, so that that is a, a very early reference to someone sort of in San Francisco, really sort of uh, sort of setting out this uh, call for the emperor's name being on his bridge. 
whether he was doing it as, as early as the as the 30s and 40s, uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, but it certainly is a is an early uh, sign uh, that there was somebody out there uh, doing that. Uh, the one that more people might be familiar with uh, is a is a plaque uh, that was at the Trans Bay Terminal for many years. This is a plaque that was uh, commissioned by uh, Eclampus Eclampus Vitus, the the the, uh, the sort of fraternity uh, that sort of takes care of uh, of Western California history and who has uh, Emperor Norton as a patron saint. Uh, they, uh, in, in 1939, uh, had this plaque made, which they had hoped to put on the new Trans Bay uh, Terminal. They could never get the permission, uh, but the plaque reads, uh, pause traveler and be grateful for, to Norton, Emperor of the United States, protector of Mexico, 1859 to 1880, whose prophetic wisdom conceived and decreed the bridging of San Francisco Bay. And then it gives a date of August 18th, 1869. Uh, at that time, there was, there was actually a fake proclamation that had been published in the Oakland Daily News uh, on that date in 1869 um, that had the emperor calling for a bridge from Oakland to um, Goat Island to Sausalito to the Farallones, which would have been truly a bridge to nowhere. Uh, but that really was a hoax proclamation just sort of poking fun at uh, at the emperor uh, at San Francisco at San Francisco at San Francisco's expense uh, but nobody really knew uh, what the actual date of the real proclamations were and so and so that that was just sort of a, a relic of, uh, of the knowledge that hadn't quite uh, arrived uh, this plaque actually did um, eventually go to the cliff house in 1955 it was there it's 1986. And it was moved to the Trans Bay Terminal uh, to, to mark the 50th anniversary of the Bay Bridge. Uh, and it was there uh, until I think about 2010. Uh, that's when the old Trans Bay Terminal was demolished to prepare for uh, the construction of the new uh, Trans Bay um, Transit uh, Center uh, on that same uh, site. So it went into storage. It actually came back uh, to the new Trans Bay uh, Center very briefly uh, in 2019. Unfortunately, about a year later, uh, the plaque was was vandalized. And so um, Eclampus Vitus, who still sort of has stewardship of this plaque, uh, has moved it to uh, Malloy's uh, in Colma. So if you go to Malloy's now, uh, you can find it uh, sort of on the wall there where it's uh, better uh, protected uh, than it than it was. Fast forward uh, to 1947. Here's Herb Cain. Everyone knows who Herb Cain is. That's Herb Cain. Well, in 1947, uh, what was beginning to bubble up was the idea that this great grand uh, Bay Bridge was already beginning to max out its capacity. So people were beginning to talk about a second Bay Bridge uh, in 47. And this would come up in, in Cain's uh, columns. Uh, and so in January of 1847, uh, uh, he writes, I hereby resolve uh, in a number of things. Uh, and, but then about halfway down through this little passage, you see that he says, to suggest that the second Bay Bridge be named after Emperor Norton, who after all was the first quote crackpot to come up with the idea. So that was in January of 47. In March of 47, Kane is back uh, talking about it again, uh, saying again about halfway down, Shouldn't that second Bay Bridge, if any, be named after Emperor Norton, who first thought of spanning our puddle about 75 years ago? Uh, and then uh, in April, here's Kane again. Um, why the name of Emperor Norton, that unforgettable character, has been allowed to fade so completely from the San Francisco scene? Of course, there's a theatrical group called the Emperor, the Emperor Players, but that's only half a nod in Emperor's direction. The name Emperor Norton Cafe has been registered at Sacramento, but where's the cafe? And if that second Bay Bridge is ever built, why should it be called the Norton Bridge? He had the idea 75 years ago. So that's, that's pretty high praise from someone who, uh, who, uh, who probably uh, had a, a much bigger audience than John Nesbitt ever had, uh, really sort of planting that seed. Even though he's not talking about the Bay Bridge, he's talking about a bridge across the Bay uh, having uh, the emperor's name. Uh, and then... Um, that was in 47, so 13 years later um, in uh, my dates right here. 
in, uh, in, in July of 1960 is this letter to the editor uh, from DJ Stevens Allen in Berkeley, who writes, many years ago, before I moved from the Bay Area, I used to think the appellation of the Bay Bridge too short in the abbreviated form and too long when being rendered San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge. Being now returned, I wonder if I may make, make a suggestion. The idea for the bridge was originally that of Emperor Norton, since his story is certainly one that recalls the glories of old San Francisco and the usual sensibility and kindness of an entire city government, might it not be appropriate and desirable to name the structure the Emperor Norton Bridge and erect a classic bronze statue of his Imperial Majesty in the act of addressing the city council on the San Francisco end? Certainly such a gesture will be highly creditable to the city. And that is the, the earliest reference, there, certainly the earliest newspaper reference that I've ever seen of the actual phrase Emperor Norton Bridge uh, being uh, published uh, anywhere. So that, that, is, um, that is notable. Fast forward another, another uh, 26 years to 1986, and that is when William Drury published his biography, uh, Norton the First Emperor of the United States, which has been, become something of a, of, of a Bible for a lot of people uh, about the emperor. Certainly it was uh, the first book length account in almost 50 years. Uh, and was, was much more um, historical and sort of placing the emperor in his time uh, than any previous account uh, had done. Uh, and so um, in the course of, of the promotions of this book, the book was coming out uh, in early uh, 86. And uh, here's Bill Drury. And, and in January of 86, the paper started sort of talking about how Bill Drury had a petition he was circulating uh, to get the Bay Bridge called the Emperor Norton Bridge. And, and these, these uh, items would come out for the next you know, six months or so. Um, and it seems uh, the first item uh, said he had 1,100 signatures. Uh, one of the last mentions uh, in June of 86 uh, said he had 350 signatures. Um, now, Bill Drury was a clamper. Uh, and from every account that I've read, it seems most likely uh, that he was simply taking this, this petition around to various clamper meetings. Uh, and there never was a truly uh, public uh, petition. And it's very possible that the whole thing was something of a, of a publicity gimmick for the book, you know, because of course the book was coming out and this was a way to attract attention. And, and, and maybe, maybe if he actually had been able to get it to take off, uh, he would have stayed at it for a little bit longer. But it seems that once uh, it was clear that, uh, that he wasn't gonna be able to get anywhere with what he was trying to do, uh, the mentions of, of that uh, petition sort of dry up. Um, but it's the first reference that I've ever seen uh, to an actual petition being circulated anywhere, uh, even if uh, on a fairly uh, limited uh, basis. But, but later in that same year, um, of course, they, they are approaching uh, the 50th anniversary of the bridge, uh, November of, of 1986. And, uh, and uh, Phil Frank, in his uh, cartoon for the Chronicle, uh, Farley, uh, takes up this issue. And so, so Frank uh, has about a half a dozen uh, different cartoons uh, in October of 1986. Uh, here's one of the early ones, uh, says Farley stares the Bay Bridge's birthday candle and muses, hmm, uh, the, the character is a reporter, um, who's in, uh, encountered by a woman who says, they can hang all the banners, candles, and lights, but that won't do it. This bridge needs a name change. To what, Glenda? The Emperor Norton Bridge. After all, he ordered it built in 1872. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but let me check my reference section. And then as the, as the little series uh, goes forward, uh, the reporter uh, goes to a, to a seer, um, uh, uh, Baba Rebop, who was a kind of a recurring character in the cartoon, uh, who conjures uh, the emperor's ghost. Uh, and uh, among other things, you know, says, until the Bay Bridge is given my name, I will haunt its spans. Long delays at the toll plaza, jackknifed big rigs, slow moving Volkswagen vans in the fast lanes. Um, so he's had a bit of fun with that. Uh, and there's, uh, there's Phil Frank, uh, who, who passed um, maybe five or six years ago. He hasn't been gone for very long, I think. I think I'm right about that. Someone will correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Uh, but I think he's not been, not been gone for very long. Uh, but um, but it was an issue that was, that was near and dear to him uh, because in 2004, uh, he would take it up, take it up again. Uh, he, he had a, a very long series of these cartoons that ran from, uh, I believe, January uh, 2004 until March 
uh, 2005, most of them, about 25, uh, running uh, September, October, November, December, uh, and all about, you know, the Emperor Norton Bridge. And, uh, and of course, this is at a time when, when, the, uh, when, the, uh, when the new uh, eastern section of the Bay Bridge is, is under construction. Uh, and so it's in the news a lot. And there's conversation about, you know, well, what are we going to call this thing? And so he uses this as the occasion for this sort of long series of, of, of comic strips about the emperor and about the Emperor Norton Bridge and uh, teaching the history of, of, of the emperor. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, uh, here's, here's one of those uh, in, early in the series uh, where the character says, I hear you friends, you too were drained emotionally. You too are lamenting the condition of society. We have an emptiness in our souls and in our spirits. We are lacking something. What are we lacking? We're lacking whimsy, friends. How are you and I going to get our daily requirement of whimsy? We're gonna to come together with one common goal. We're gonna get that over budget Bay Bridge renamed the Emperor Norton Bridge. It's not much friends, but it's something. Uh, and in this whole series, uh, it sort of goes back and forth between, between, between sort of naming uh, just the west side for Emperor Norton, just the east side for Emperor Norton, the whole thing for Emperor Norton, it never really sort of settles on, on a particular uh, uh, agenda. Um, but, but, um, um, but that, that is, that is in, in, uh, 2004, uh, and, and at the end of that year, uh, in November of 2004, uh, Supervisor Aaron Peskin, who was in his first, uh, run, uh, supervisor at that time, took this issue up, and he actually, uh, introduced a, uh, a resolution, uh, in the Board of Supervisors to, uh, to name, the entire Bay Bridge, uh, the Emperor Norton Bridge. Uh, and then the following month, uh, in December uh, of 2004, uh, the board actually issued a, a resolution uh, calling for only the eastern side, uh, the Oakland side, to be named uh, the Emperor Norton Bridge, uh, which always has made me wonder uh, how serious they really were. But in any event, uh, you know, Oakland wasn't very impressed with this idea and, and, and the whole thing just basically sort of fell flat and went uh, nowhere. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that the, in, the current, uh, uh, in the current time, uh, most people uh, who grew up uh, in Oakland and the East Bay don't know uh, that actually Emperor Norton was hanging out there all the time. He, he made weekly visits to, to, uh, to Oakland and to Berkeley and, uh, and was in their papers and they knew who he was. Uh, but of course now he is, he is seen as being you know, primarily uh, a San Francisco figure and they, they don't know that, uh, that side of his, his uh, story. So it really uh, was then uh, in 2013 that this issue of the Emperor Norman Bridge came up again. I, I, um, you know, this, is, this is when in the summer of 2013, the idea of naming the Western side of the Bay Bridge uh, for Willie Brown, uh, the, uh, the former uh, mayor, former assembly speaker, was beginning to uh, percolate. Uh, I had a friend who came to me and, and said, and said, oh no, oh no, we want our bridge named uh, for the emperor. And I, you know, at, th at that point, uh, I had been in San Francisco for about three years, uh, grew up in, in Kentucky, had lived in New York for a long time. Emperor was not a part of my story at all, but I, I learned very quickly and I, I launched this petition. Uh, calling for the entire uh, Bay Bridge to be sort of named uh, for the emperor. It, it uh, got a lot of media attention, uh, took off, and uh, we got about, I think about 30 to 100 signatures in six weeks. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the name of the bridge, but there was a lot of wonderful energy around that effort. And that really sort of became the impetus uh, for uh, the launch of what uh, then was known as the Emperor's Bridge Campaign, uh, and what now is known as uh, the Emperor Norton Trust. And so, um, you know, we learned a lot, uh, especially in the, in the first you know, six months or so, sort of after, after the, uh, uh, the, the legislature sort of passed uh, the name of the Western side for Willie Brown. Uh, this is, uh, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, and uh, actually in, in February of, of um, of 2014, um, uh, Willie Brown had a had a party for himself uh, on Treasure Island to celebrate uh, this uh, naming, 
and a group of anonymous artists uh, got together and made sure that on that morning, uh, this sign was at the foot of the San Francisco side of the Bay Bridge, saying in 1872, Emperor Norton decreed this bridge, a uh, gift from the artists of the city of San Francisco, February 11th, uh, 2014. But of course, you see that what is, what is there in, in, in very sort of bold print is Emperor Norton Bridge, and that's what they, that's what they are, 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 are wanting uh, the bridge to be uh, called. Uh, two and a half years later, we got together with some of those same folks. Uh, this was on the 80th uh, anniversary of the bridge uh, in November of uh, 2016. Uh, we had a gathering and, and we made the same uh, sign with slightly different wording uh, saying, uh, salute Emperor Norton on the 80th anniversary of his bridge, uh, open as the San Francisco Open Bay Bridge on 12th November 1936. Um, but, uh, but, but in that, in that first uh, six months or so um, uh, after uh, the naming of the Western side, and as we were sort of beginning to sort of lay the groundwork for uh, the Emperor's Bridge campaign, we realized something very, very important, you know, because, you know, one of the things that, that made that whole situation seem so fraught uh, was the belief that it really was either war, you know, that once Willie Brown's name came on the bridge, then that was just basically it. Everything else was going to be off the table. Uh, nothing else was going to be an option. It wasn't even, cl even clear uh, that the name Bay Bridge was going to be used anymore. Um, and we learned pretty quickly uh, that that actually is not how the state operates. Uh, the state uh, continued and continues to recognize uh, San Francisco Bay Bridge uh, as the name of the entire uh, two bridge crossing. And then it recognizes Willie Brown uh, Bridge as the name of the of the San Francisco uh, side, and those two things exist in tandem. And when you really drill down, you find out that going back to the 1960s, uh, there are about 30 or so state bridges uh, with, with two and three and four and five names for the same bridge in different configurations. Uh, there's a long uh, history and precedent protocol uh, for the state to basically do whatever they want uh, when it comes to, to naming uh, roads uh, and bridges. Um, the closest one uh, next to uh, San Francisco is the, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, uh, which was named Richmond San Rafael Bridge uh, by legislation in 1951. And the bridge opened uh, 1955, excuse me. And then in 1981, uh, the legislature came back and named it the John F. McCarthy Memorial Bridge those two names existing in tandem uh, for the exact same structure. Now, the example that is, that is probably the closest to what we're talking about in the case of, of, the, uh, of the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge is this bridge. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a sort of a satellite view of the Humboldt Bay Bridge uh, in Eureka. This bridge um, uh, is, is unofficially known, uh, but this is recognized uh, in, in Caltrans uh, lists of uh, bridge names uh, that it recognizes uh, Humboldt Bay Bridge as the unofficial name. And then in 1971, the legislature named this bridge uh, the, the Samoa Bridge. So it's recognized as both the Humboldt Bay Bridge and the Samoa Bridge. And then uh, later in, in the 70s, uh, the legislature came back. And as you can see, the bridge actually is, is, is a bridge made of three separate uh, bridges, uh, one here, one here, and one here. Uh, each one of those individual bridges has its own separate name. So you've got five different names uh, going on. So there, there, there clearly is, is, uh, is protocol uh, for that sort of thing uh, happening. And what, what we've been talking about, and you know, for the last you know, several years, we really have sort of focused our efforts uh, on, on uh, big anniversary years, you know, thinking that, well, you know, this is, this is something the legislature has to do. Uh, the political winds have to be blowing in the right way. Uh, probably not a great idea to just keep on and on and on harping on this, but maybe sometimes, you know, politicians uh, like to do something symbolic uh, on a big symbolic year, a big symbolic anniversary. And so, and so we, we, uh, we focus really on uh, pretty, pretty exclusively on our, our, our historical research, educational efforts, uh, walks, talks, all that sort of thing uh, until 2018. Then we sort of start raising this flag again around the time of the emperor's a bicentennial, which was going on that year. 
Uh, and then, and then this year really has 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 presents itself as the next big opportunity. 2022 being the 150th anniversary uh, of the emperor's proclamations. If the, if the politicians wanted to to pick a a really big symbolic date to get this done, uh, this would be a great time to do it. Uh, and so that's kind of why we're focusing on that now, and why uh, here at, at this uh, relatively early stage in the year, we thought it'd be a good idea to sort of review the history of this this uh, this very uh, old uh, idea and also sort of talk a little bit about uh, you know what needs to happen to uh, to, to actually you know make this uh, come to pass this is the visual aid that we've been we've been sort of floating around uh, sort of showing what the what the taxonomy of, of the Bay Bridge uh, naming would look like uh, if what we're suggesting uh, were to come to pass so so you would basically have uh, San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge and Emperor Norton Bridge existing in tandem uh, with, with Emperor Norton Bridge added as an honorary name, but leaving the Bay Bridge name in place, no interest uh, in, in, in getting rid of that name. A lot of people assume as soon as you start talking about naming bridges that you're talking about, about renaming or replacing or taking a name off. We wanna make it very, very clear that all these names get to stay. Uh, there's there's no there's no need to, to challenge anybody or anything or any history. Uh, just simply a question of of adding something new uh, and and using that opportunity to uh, to give the Emperor Norton his due and to really sort of help the Bay uh, Area uh, tell its story in a very colorful and historically relevant way. Um, I don't know and haven't heard of, of any uh, idea of anybody uh, proposing a name for the eastern side. I would guess that at some time that might happen. So that's that's sort of a, a placeholder in this chart. Uh, but but all the names here would be uh, exactly as they as they are now uh, with the addition of one. In fact, uh, the way that the legislature uh, uh, sort of specs out uh, these namings, if you are a, a private or organization, a private group uh, that sponsors one of these naming proposals, and you are successful then well if you want signs you have to pay for it so if you if you think about sort of what what it would actually cost to overhaul the entire uh, bay bridge naming uh, uh highway signage uh naming uh that would be a, a very very tall order indeed but this way everything stays where it is we have a nice big sign on one end a nice big sign on the other end and and we can we can call it a day um so uh this is uh the splash page uh, for uh, EmperorNortonBridge.org, uh, which is basically simply the, the section uh, of our larger site, uh, EmperorNortonTrust.org, uh, that deals with all the bridge issues. So everything that I'm talking about tonight in infinite detail uh, is, is, is in these pages. If you click the Learn More button, you go to that part of the website, and there's also a button where you can, you can go and, and sign the petition if you haven't done that already. Um, well, I, I would be I would be remiss uh, to, to be here uh, if, if I didn't uh, mention uh, that the, the Emperor Trust is a membership organization. We do take uh, donations. Uh, if you uh, become a member uh, for only thirty five bucks a year, um, uh, you are recognized as, as an emissary of the empire for uh, for uh, twelve months, and uh, and we hope that uh, that once we sort of can get back into uh, doing live events. Uh, more than we've been able to the last uh, couple of years, uh, you know, these cars will once again be good for mission of those events. Uh, but it certainly is very, very helpful in terms of supporting uh, our uh, work. You know, we're talking about uh, the Emperor Norton Bridge tonight, but, uh, but you know, th that really is a very small part of what we're about. Uh, we've got 140 some uh, research articles. Uh, we've got uh, an Emperor Norton uh, map of the world, interactive map of Emperor Norton locations. Uh, there is an archive of Emperor Norton in art, uh, music and film, just a whole world of, of, uh, of sort of Emperor Norton related uh, research and, and interesting things uh, on the site and we're, we're continuing to add to and develop. And certainly uh, if this is something that you uh, believe in, would like to see that work continue, uh, we would welcome your uh, participation uh, financially and we'll send you one of these uh, awesome uh, cards and you'll be, uh, you'll be official. And I think uh, that probably is a good time for me to wrap up my comments. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Taryn, and then we can open up for uh, Q&A.
All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, if anyone has any questions, why don't you, I'm going to try something different because we're kind of a small group. Why don't you raise your hand in the, um, in Zoom, you can raise your hand and then I'll turn your mic on and you can ask your question directly. While we are figuring that out, um, in the chat space, Lotus uh, asked um, if you could comment about Emperor Norton's proclamations to defend the Chinese. I referred her to one of your articles in the trust's um, blog we actually have a new one, a new one. Uh, we, we, had, we had never before, uh, this has been a, a recurring feature in our research for a long time now, but had never, had never really sort of put everything uh, in one place and just had a research tool where you can kind of see all of that. Uh, the emperor actually uh, was issuing proclamations uh, between 1868 and 1878. Uh, those are the ones that we know about or are able to sort of see. Uh, of course, many newspapers have been lost and uh, resources have been lost, uh, you know, partially uh, in the fire uh, and earthquake, uh, partially just because it's been a long time. Um, so so I, my, my guess is that there probably were others. In fact, there are references to others, uh, but we haven't found the proclamation themselves. Uh, but he started really in 1868 uh, uh, around the time of the Berlin, uh, the Berlin Game Treaty when there was there were all the ideas about 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 beginning to sort of create a more, more equitable uh, platform for uh, Chinese in the U.S. economy uh, and, and what that would need to mean in terms of, of, of getting uh, the Chinese sort of recognized in courts and have their testimony heard in court, the same, the same as everyone else. Uh, and that became an issue that, that, uh, that Emperor Norton really sort of got his teeth into. Uh, and he issued, uh, we've, we found uh, 13 uh, proclamations so far uh, there are another, another couple uh, that seem like they probably are the Emperor's proclamations, but we've not laid our eyes on, 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 on an image uh, uh, yet. Uh, so, so we sort of hold those out there as, as, uh, as with an asterisk. But, uh, but, but it definitely was, it was an abiding uh, concern of his. Uh, and he was talking about, um, you know, what was happening in, in, in San Francisco, but also what was happening on the West Coast uh, generally. There was a uh, I mentioned early in the in, in the uh, in the talk there was a there was uh, I think in October of uh, in October of eighteen seventy one uh, there had been an awful awful uh, riot in Los Angeles in which uh, fifteen uh, Chinese men were rounded up and hanged um, and uh, and this just this just uh, created a, a real furor and so that was that was part of what uh, the emperor was referring to in eighteen seventy two. Um, and then later on in 1878, uh, in addition to, to the proclamations, you know, in 1878, uh, Dennis Kearney, who was, who was sort of the, uh, you know, the Irish, um, you know, demagogue who was, who was best known for his, his chant, you know, the Chinese must go, uh, would hold these, these, these racist um, anti-Chinese uh, rallies in the sandlots uh, across from City Hall. And this was well known. It was an established thing. Every, every Sunday afternoon, he was going to be there. There were these huge crowds to, to come hear him speak. And so um, uh, on April 28th, um, uh, there was one of these rallies, and, and, and the emperor sort of showed up, positioned himself very close to the platform before the start of the event, and got on a little box, stood up, and, and just basically said, you guys need to go home. You know, you're not bringing any credit to, your, to yourselves or to your city. Uh, by doing what you're trying to do, nothing good is going to come of this, and you need to go. Um, you know, of course, he was he was laughed off the off the uh, off the grounds, and and uh, and and you know, very uh, you know, summarily dismissed. But it's definitely sort of a sign of his willingness to step into a crowd where probably almost nobody in the whole crowd uh, would have agreed with that sentiment, uh, and put himself you know in some physical uh, danger. Uh, uh, to, to, to do that and to, and to really uh, sort of speak truth to power in a, in a very physical way. So, uh, so very impressive for, for someone like Emperor Martin, I thought. You know, you mentioned, I want to get to back to the bridge and we have a question from Michael Weber and I'm going to ask him to speak in just a second, but I do have a picture that is relevant to what you mentioned about Burlingame. Um, 
uh, Anson Burlingame. And I just want to show the picture because I think it's important for people to see, you know, this fellow who was, um, who was Burlingame. He was a, uh, he brought a, a, a Chinese embassy in 1868 to San Francisco, and he brought this group of Chinese princes and bureaucrats on a world tour to acquaint them with Western civilization, and he brought them to San Francisco. Uh, Burlingame was a diplomat who was appointed by President Lincoln to foster relations between China and um, the United States. And so I just have, I want to move on and go back to the bridge, but I just really want to show you this one picture that I have because it might be helpful for you. Um, and it's just kind of interesting to see. Um, but can you see that? You see that picture? Chinese embassy in San Francisco? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, 1868, th this was in San Francisco. Uh, and I, I don't know if they actually came to one of the Mechanics Institute fairs, but this photo was on display. And so San Franciscans got to see it. And I bet you Emperor Norton did too. That's fabulous. Um, so I'll send that picture to you later. But... Well, I'll just say, you know, I mean, this whole conversation is, is actually extremely relevant uh, to, to the bridge. I mean, we, you know, we have said all along that, that, that many, many people, as much as they love Emperor Norton, they also somewhat think of him as a, as a lovable, harumphing kook in a funny hat who kind of marched his own drummer. Uh, and we always have felt, you know, unless until people really understand uh, how forward thinking he was and, and how he really was an early champion of these values of fairness and tolerance and self-determination and the common good uh, that came to be, you know, connected to San Francisco in the Bay Area until they see him in that light, they probably won't see him as someone whose name deserves to be on such a monumental structure. So it all, it all sort of goes together. And so we, we long felt like, uh, this kind of long sort of educational process about the emperor, um, you know, really goes hand in hand uh, with, with the bridge idea. All right. Well, we have a question by Michael Weber. Michael, I've turned your mic on, but you still need to turn it on. On, um, I've given okay. you permission to talk. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. First of all, John, excellent presentation. Very, very nice. And thank, thank you. You. Thank you. Uh, you, you mentioned something about uh, the plaque and that it, that it found a new home or it, it presently resides in a place called Malloy's yes. in Colma. What, what is that and what did they do to, to deserve such a, an important memento? Well, M Malloy's, um, uh, Malloy's is, 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 a, is a very, very old bar. It's on, um, I'm not going to remember what the, the, the old name of the road is, is Old Mission Road. So if you if you okay. go to Colma, if you go to Colma and you see you see uh, um, uh, Woodlawn Cemetery where the Emperor is buried right. there on the right, and you keep on oh, going, and there's like a little split there. You take the left split, and you go about a half a mile, half a mile to a mile on the right. It's a really old, old, uh, maybe even been there since around 1900 before. Uh, old oh. Irish bar. Uh, longtime champions of the emperor. There was a there was actually like an emperor Norton room there for a long time. There's actually a, a section in the center of the bar where they just have all of this uh, emperor Norton uh, memorabilia. And uh, mm -hmm. there is a there is a there is a tradition going back uh, about forty some years, I think, uh, of of the uh, the clampers, the members of E Clampus Vitus. They they go uh, on the on the on the Saturday uh, closest to the emperor's death day, uh, which is uh, January 8th, uh, 1880. So they go on the, the Saturday closest to that day, they make a pilgrimage to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, 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 to the emperor's grave site. And then they go drown their sorrows <laughs> at Beloit's. And so, and so, and that's been going on for a very, very long time. And so there's, there's a, there's a, a long forged uh, relationship kind of around uh, Emperor Norton and those issues. And uh, I mean, I, I, I would love to see it in a more public spot. Um, love to see it in San Francisco. Um, but I think, I mean, I, but I understand the concern. Uh, my, my understanding is that, that the, the, the issue with the, the transit center was that the, that, the, that the transit center, their, their policy was uh, that they actually would not allow uh, a, a plaque like that to be put under glass or under plexiglass. So it was totally exposed. 
Uh, and oh. somebody basically just came along with a knife and just cut it in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, you just, you know, what are you going to, what are you going to do? Uh, and obviously it's, it's, it's a public bus platform. Unfortunately, we all know that people are on public platforms platforms uh are there are people there who are, are not always in full control um and so who knows what would have caused someone to do that but uh but it's just you know too high a risk to leave it there i mean it, it was uh, i haven't seen it uh, up close since the repair it was repaired uh so i, I believe they've been able to to uh, to mask the damage pretty well but great i put the uh address for malloy's in the chat space but it's oh great 1655 Mission Road, South San Francisco. Great. And it was actually, I don't know if you could, I don't know if you could tell from the, from the photographs that I showed, um, but it had been, um, of course, it had, it had been outside the transit terminal and at the Cliff House for, for, you know, decades. And it showed the weathering, you know, just all, all the oxidation. It was practically green. Uh, and, and so in connection with that, uh, that move to the transit center in 2019, uh, when the plaque had been removed, um, it was taken to, to someone at the De Young uh, Museum and it was, you know, properly, you know, clean and restored. And so, and so now it is, it is very uh, bright and shiny and, uh, and, uh, and, and much more like what it was in 1939. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? You can um, put it in the chat space or you can raise your little digital hand there and I will turn your mic on. Yes, we have a question from Rafi. I hope I said that right. Rafi, I uh, gave you permission to speak, so just unmute yourself. Got it. We hear you. <laughs> unmute, unmute is one of my favorite buttons. But OK, my question is, what? Uh, in the next few months or the next year, do we have upcoming uh, events to support naming the bridge for our emperor? Or will this come out in the um, uh, newsletter from the trust? Both and. Uh, sir, so any, any, any new development, uh, we, we will cover it uh, very loudly and, and very often. Um, uh, I, I would say that probably right now is, is definitely a good time to, to be uh, writing letters uh, to, to, the, um, to, the, um, to the senator uh, from San Francisco, Scott Weiner, and to, um, I mean, even, even though Phil Ting is not, the, the, the protocol is supposed to be, uh, now this is not the way that it went with the, with, with the Willie Brown, I mean, but the protocol that, that, the, that the legislature specifies is that, and we, and we, we feel like we probably want to do it as much by the book as possible, uh, that, 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 the legislate, that, that one or more legislators have to, have to sponsor such a resolution. And, and at least one of those uh, legislators has to come from the district uh, where uh, bridge road, whatever it is, is. Uh, so, so for us, you know, that that basically sort of means that basically means uh, Scott Weiner, uh, Phil Ting, although he's not technically in the Bay Bridge district. And I guess right now, uh, the seat that was occupied by David, David Chang is vacant. Uh, but I but I would think that uh, that it still is appropriate to to cultivate. Um, 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 I'm blanking on the names now. Um, um, David, um, you have Jerry. a you have a oh. wonderful blog post about what to say. You have sample letters. You have addresses of assembly right. assembly people, senators. I just posted that in the chat space, but I can read out the list of names if you want. But yeah, they, um, David uh, Scott Weiner, uh, David. I think David Campos and, and Matt Haney would be the yeah. two the two leading candidates. Uh, for for the uh, for the David uh, Chang uh, seat, um, and, and also and also uh, your uh, local supervisor, uh, if you're in San Francisco, especially. Uh, I mean, what what we have, I am. what we have, what we have have, have been told numerous times, and, and and I went to Sacramento a couple of years ago and uh, and had some conversations with legislative aides uh, to these people, uh, and and when I talked to to the aide uh, at the time for. Uh, Rob Bonta, who uh, I think now is his wife, who is in that seat uh, from from the East Bay. 
um, you know, what they said was, well, get San Francisco to support it, and then we'll look at come on, coming along. You know, now that may be a pass the buck maneuver on their part. It probably is on some level, uh, but I think I think certainly uh, you know this proposal probably will have a hard time getting taken seriously in the legislature if if the San Francisco delegation uh, and some significant portion of of, of the of the board of supervisors is not is not behind it. Um, so um, so that's you know that's one thing. I mean, one one of the things that is that is somewhat in our favor uh, is. These these naming resolutions are, are not like, they're not like bills. Like if you have if you have a bill, uh, there's a legislative calendar, uh, and those 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 bills that are to be considered for this uh, legislative calendar year already have to have been submitted. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility uh, with the resolutions. Basically, legislators can introduce introduce those at any at any time. Uh, there is a certain amount that has to be provided in terms of, um, you know, votes have to be taken. So, so you, you've got to, you've got to marshal votes uh, in, in, in both, in the transportation committees of both houses uh, and on the floor vote for both houses. Mm -hmm. So that, that takes a certain amount of time. Uh, but I know that the, that the, that the Willie Brown resolution in 2013 uh, was not even uh, brought to the floor, uh, not even proposed until June of that. Uh, but certainly I would think that it, it would be probably ideal uh, for something to be uh, on the floor, you know, within the next couple of months. All right. Um, Sandra has a question. What type of sign, I guess, would you like to see with Emperor Norton's name on it? Well, you know, I think we'd have to, we'd have, we should be so lucky as to have that, that, uh, that, that uh, preference to express. But uh, I mean, I think, you know, typically, you know, you know, these, these, um, these, these honorary naming signs, you see them on the side of the road, they're, they're quite small. Uh, they're, they're not very big. In fact, they're easy to miss. Uh, the ones, the, the ones that are on the bridge now uh, for, for Willie Brown, for the Western side, you, you basically blink and you miss it. Um, those signs uh, back in 2013 uh, cost a thousand bucks a sign, uh, and and that is kind of the, the standard issue uh, Caltrans honorary naming sign. And what what I don't know, what I don't know is uh, if if there is a policy that well that just simply is all we do. In other words, you simply can't get anything any better than that uh, because certainly if 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 the money was there and the desire was there, I would love to see a, a big overhead sign, like a like a big like one of these overhead you know things that you absolutely cannot miss. There is there is a, a sign structure uh, on on the San on the San Francisco side, about maybe a quarter mile, a half mile to the entrance, a huge sign structure uh, that has had a, a blank green sign. I don't know what it was in the past. But it's it's been a blank green sign for years, for a decade and more. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, that's a that's a nice placeholder. So at least at least if they'll say you've got one place where the sign basically is already there, it's just a case of uh, you know paying someone to go up there and put the letters up. So well, we can always dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? You want to raise your little digital hand, or do you want to write it in your in the chat space? That's fine too. All right. Well, in the meantime, I just want to refer people to uh, the Emperor Norton Trust's website, which is emperornortontrust.org. There is a great deal of biographical material about Emperor Norton, and then there is also an archive of art and music and film that feature imagery of Emperor Norton. And there's a blog with an enormous amount of research about how Emperor Norton really fit into the wider scheme of San Francisco's history and, uh, you know, really how San Francisco's culture and um, values have really kind of sprung up out of Emperor Norton's uh, thinking. So I encourage you to take a look at that, emperornortontrust.org. And in the meantime, I don't see that we have any more questions. 
So is there anything else you want to tell our audience today, John? Other than please write a letter. Yeah, I think that's, that's you know, and, and keep your eyes peeled. I mean, obviously pay attention. I mean, we, we, we have, um, you know, we, we post regularly on Facebook uh, and, and Twitter. Uh, we do have a newsletter you, you can subscribe to uh, via the website. It's, it's in, the, it's in the, uh, the navigation menu on the left. There's a subscribe uh, button. Uh, we try not to put those out too very often, maybe like once every month or so. So you're not just getting inundated with uh, with emails, but it's a good it's a good it's a good place to kind of keep uh, keep track of what we're uh, what we're up to and what our latest latest is. But, pro but probably in terms of of, of the, the, the to the minute uh, stuff, uh, probably Facebook and Twitter are the best places to sort of see uh, kind of what we're doing on a on a regular basis. Well, I put the sign up uh, link from the trust's website so you can just click through right now if you want to sign up and get updates from uh, what the trust is up to meanwhile you can also find them uh the trust on facebook and on twitter <laughs> um meanwhile i want to thank you john for coming and you know as always sharing some fresh research on the emperor Thanks for having me. I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that clip didn't play. You know, I, 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 it was playing in my, in my, you know, as I was building the thing out. But maybe there's some YouTube weird thing that just kind of won't, won't play because it's if, 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 but if people can, can, can go uh, to our, to our website, if you, if you find the, the, the art archive and go to the film section, uh, that page will have a link. Uh, to that uh, Telephone Time episode 56. Uh, and we've actually partnered with the Internet Archive uh, to make that available. So you can actually sort of see that whole thing uh, ad-free on our website. It's about a half an hour. Uh, and it's got that whole introduction that I was going to try to show. It's, uh, it's really, uh, it's very charming. You know, I just found it while you were talking and mm -hmm. I put it in the chat space. Oh, cool. And I will also send out an email when the video is ready to roll of this talk and I can link to that as well. Right. So fear not, you'll get the video one way or the other. Um, well, hey, thank you so much for coming out or tuning in tonight, um, all of you and uh, John once again, great working with you. And I look forward to um, the victory party. Excellent, <laughs> so do I. Oh, and Julian asks if there's any way to save the chat. Yes, I will go ahead and um, put the pertinent comments and links in that email that I send you within the next couple of days that has the link to the video that John's mentioning and the link to the video for this event. So it'll be um, sent to you via Eventbrite to your email box. Maybe not tomorrow, because tomorrow is a little bit crazy, but certainly by the weekend. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone, and look forward to, uh, like I said, the victory party. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice evening. Thanks for coming. <laughs>